of spiritual aid. So um, if, if you want more information about that, uh, just follow along online, and uh, we'll be making resources available as well. But um, maybe we'll turn towards some scripture here, get us started. Yeah, let's go to uh, like Matthew chapter 4 is a good scripture to kind of start our our case study on uh, fasting and prayer. And we have to realize that fasting was done in the Old Testament in, 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 many, in many different uh, accounts. You know, I think of Esther in that emergency, right? She called upon her people to fast and pray. Um, you think of many times in like Second Kings, there's a few, few cases of, of in, the, in the case of an emergency, right, in which an army is invading, that uh, they, they called to fast and pray. Daniel was one that fasted and prayed, right? Um, Nehemiah and even Ezra and some of those. And so you see definitely uh, fasting was, is, is something that was centered in the Old Testament. Uh, but also we see as we look at Matthew, it's something that uh, Jesus' ministry was, was very much uh, on fasting and prayer. And even before Jesus did any public ministry, he's probably 30-some years old right now. The Spirit, we see that in chapter 4, verse 1, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And so we see that the Spirit of God led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted, but to be fasting and prayer. And so I've always seen, like, and I know a lot of commentators would suggest that prior to Jesus' public ministry, fasting was like a... a a prerequisite. It was preparation for for ministry in the public atmosphere. And so, um, if Jesus did it, I would think that maybe it's a good idea. It's a good idea. And so, and we do see from that point on, after Jesus fasted and prayed, uh, the devil left him. This is in verse eleven. Angels came and ministered to him. But then beyond that. We see that ministry began, verse 17 of chapter 4. From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he calls his disciples, and then he starts proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom of God in verse 23, and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. And so Jesus was definitely filled and empowered with the Holy Spirit. And, I, and, and he fasted and prayed to put himself in a position to be completely empowered by the Holy Spirit for kingdom uh, ministry. So, yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. It's a good start when you're getting ready to uh, to jump into some bigger things spiritually, maybe, just discerning God's guidance there and inviting his presence. Absolutely. Like, so if you're, if you're discerning, like, ministry, right, or if I'm supposed to jump into this or I'm experiencing a lack of spiritual vitality, right, um, over this particular ministry that maybe God's calling me into. Like, Jesus gives us a great example of, like, hey, like, go into a season of fasting and prayer mm -hmm. and uh, allow, uh, as I, I always like to say, you're starving the flesh and you're feeding the spirit. You're starving the flesh, our physical flesh, not our body so much as our flesh, our sinful flesh. You're starving it. You're withering it away. And then you're, you're, you're increasing your, the spirit the spirit of God within you, you're feeding the spirit and allowing him to do that work. And so that is definitely a great, uh, it, it's a gift that we have to uh, prepare us for a season of ministry is to fast. Yeah. Um, you know, like here, Tim, it says, after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. <laughs> Thanks for adding that in, right? Like it was, uh, this is so clear. He didn't, didn't have much to eat for 40 days and he was hungry. Um, I'd be interested in your personal life. Just like, what does that, what does that accomplish? If you are fasting from food, you're going to feel hungry, right? And maybe we're not used to feeling hungry. Uh, when we're hungry, right. we eat. Um, so we don't get hangry and right. we don't want to get hangry. So what, what do we do when we feel hungry? Yeah. Uh, well, Jesus continued to go to the Word of God. We see that in Matthew chapter 4. He says, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And so it's in that place of hunger that you should be hungering for righteousness, hungering for the Word of God, hungering for Christ and his presence in those moments, you know, that you're, you're feeling that 
the, those hunger pains, we're really not, we're not starving, we're just simply hungry, mm -hmm. right? And uh, Richard Foster talks about how we're, uh, our, our, our bodies, we treat it like a spoiled child, in many ways, in particular in America, right? Because you feel hungry, you just, you know, you feel, you know, like a spoiled child, right? And, uh, and it's, it's just kind of the beginning piece, of, it's, it's almost like the, uh, the first fruits of now, like actually I'm going through, I'm detoxing my body, Right, and so I'm feeling these, uh, feeling these, uh, yeah, just having these uh, feelings that feel negative about my body. It's actually a part of the process of breaking down, uh, God allowing our bodies to break down of its physical flesh, of what we think we really need, we, like we really are hungry. No, we're not really hungry. We just think that we're hungry because we're so used to that. So allowing us to kind of go through that breakdown process so that his spirit can kind of, take over and lead us from there. Yeah, no, that's good. And would you say it's fair to say, like it seems throughout, throughout scripture, whether it's Ezra, Nehemiah, David, the book of Acts, Jesus here, like a lot of times when people are entering into fasting, there's clear purpose almost established in their mind before they even start, right? right. So maybe, maybe there's a little, you have some thoughts or comments just on like, if someone's thinking, well, I, I wanna try this prayer and fasting, just some practical steps maybe to even start before just going in blind sort of and saying, when I wake up tomorrow, I'm not gonna eat. But like, what is, what is the purpose of that? Or just, yeah. you know, whether you're journaling that or writing that down, yeah. like what are, how do we discern the, what we're fasting for specifically? Does yeah, that make sense? Yeah, and I would say uh, the first thing that we need to do is we need to be in prayer with God. You know, we need to ask Jesus, Jesus, wh what do you want me to fast? Why do you want me to fast? And so our motives need to be right, right? Mm -hmm. And I would say Richard Foster, I, I lean on Richard Foster's uh, chapter here. He's written a great chapter on fasting. He talks about how you, you, your heart needs to be fixed first and foremost on Jesus, like as primary, that your desire is to grow closer to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Not so much for just this, the external benefit of, hey, I need discernment here or um, I need uh, wisdom over here or whatever, but Jesus is centered. That's your fixed motive is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Desiring and focusing more on who Jesus is and, and having that intimacy with him. Yeah. Because that's where Jesus goes in Matthew chapter 9. He's, he talks about with his disciples. He talks about this idea of the bridegroom, right? Right. The bride is with you. We can go there real quick. Yeah. Yeah, uh, chapter 9, verse 14. Then the disciples of John came to him saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples did not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one puts a, sh a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for that patch tears away from the garment, and a worse tear is made. Neither is new wine put in old wineskins. If it is, the skins burst, and the wine is spilled, and the skins are destroyed. But new wine is put in new, into fresh wineskins, and so both are preserved. So we have this idea of, this, of, the, of G uh, John's disciples asking, why do the Pharisees fast, and your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said, can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? the days will come. And so this idea of like the bridegroom, Jesus was already with them. And so there's no need to fast. It's more to feast because Jesus' presence is right there, literal in body form. But the days will come when the bridegroom will leave, then they shall fast. And so from my understanding, from what commentators would su su suggest that from that point on to Jesus' death and resurrection, his ascension, even to the church age, that's that period of time, right? That he's saying, like, the bridegroom has left. The bride, which is the church, is still us. Therefore, fast so that you can, in a sense, be drawn into the presence of Jesus, drawn into your bridegroom, mm -hmm. which is Jesus. He's not here physically, but he is here spiritually. So fasting needs to be first fixed on drawing near to your bride groom Jesus Christ and that intimacy with him and so that needs to be your motive as you pray you need to just have that as your fixed motive is drawing near to Jesus and then from there I think it's pra practically 
to jot down on your journal or just on a piece of paper, God, what are some other things in addition to that that you would have me to fast for? Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's spiritual direction, whether it's for family members who need Jesus, whether it's for, I have like spiritual bond, like I'm in bondage from something, right? Like a stronghold. Uh, God can do wonders if we, if we seek him in that and, and, and starve the flesh and feed the spirit. Um, and so those are secondary reasons, but nonetheless, it's good to have those uh, on hand as you go into that time of prayer and fasting. Um, in addition to that, I would encourage that you need to set a, a date for that. You know, like how long am I going to fast? Am I going to fast for one day, two day, three day, uh, just a, a, a lunch, whatever. But I've noticed in my own life, like, like it's almost like you're giving an oath to God. You're giving a promise to the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. This is this is by, you're praying about this, but you're saying, "Okay, Jesus, I'm going to do, I'm going to go from here to here." Because so I've noticed if, if if you don't set a date, then I don't know. I feel like you've uh, how the best. Yeah, it's practice. just I'd say for for setting any goals, they talk yeah. about you know making them measurable and attainable. And so right. if if you just say this year I'm going to work out more. Uh, that's not nearly as effective as laying out an obtainable goal within right. that. So I'd say the same for a spiritual discipline of fasting. If we're entering into three weeks of fasting that you actually, when we're getting ready to start that on Tuesday, November 1st, that we have a little bit of a framework in our mind that says uh, every Monday I'm going to fast completely and uh, every Wednesday um, fast until dinner. Um, or maybe there's a sustained fast through that. Um, that's just a, a totally different uh, eating habit or rhythm, but whatever that looks like, it's kind of scheduled and laid out. Right. Yeah. And I would encourage, like, if, if you're new to fasting um, and you're just like, okay, where do I start? Like in terms of how long, I just encourage you to start off with just even a meal, mm -hmm. start there um, and then work your way up from there to go to like maybe a 24 hour day. And then, like, in a few weeks or something like that, or the next week, go, go maybe if God's, you, you're in a journey you're, of experimenting, experimenting with God in this, to maybe go two days. Mm -hmm. And then kind of just increase that as, as you see fit um, during, that, during that season of fasting. But it's, you know, you got to, um, it's a progression from, you know, just like a little kid, you know, you don't want to, you know, it's kind of like milk and meat. You know, you got to. <laughs> With a little baby, you got to feed them with you don't milk go first. 21 days right off the bat, maybe. That's right, just that's right. Water <laughs> only and uh, just hope for the best. Right, right, All right. right. Kind of yeah. ease into that, maybe next time around, ease do a little bit that. more. Yeah. Yeah. And it just, we just have to realize, uh, um, we just have to realize that it is painful. Like, he was, was hungry. It is hungry. Jesus, Jesus was hungry, right? Uh, fasting's not. It's not easy in a sense, right? You're, David says that you're, David says in the Psalms that you're afflicting your, I'm afflicting my body, humbling my body through affliction. And my understanding is that's actually like, like he's actually fasting. He's actually saying, I'm fasting. I'm, I'm afflicting my body of physical food, physical pleasure uh, in that sense for spiritual purposes. And so we just have to come into an understanding that you will feel pain physically a little bit that's good maybe distinguish a little bit for people the the difference between doing this for the sake of that affliction or physical pain or, or sense of like duty and responsibility like i'm accomplishing something before god or doing this for him and service to him in a in a works-based way versus the spiritual sense of uh, leading through that with our, our works and our behaviors are actually inviting the, the spiritual transformation. Could you help distinguish between those a little bit as far as, um, uh, like, I, I wouldn't want people to carry with them into this three-week stretch a sense of, like, well, I need to do this or I'm a bad Christian or I'm immature or, like, this is what the mature people do, so I better do it. Like, what's just a healthy spiritual understanding there? Yeah, I would say that, uh, and I would say the same thing with, like, if you look a little bit uh, in Matthew chapter 6, it talks about, Jesus talks about when you pray, he says when you give, right? And then he says when you fast. And so I would, I would, I think what Jesus is actually alluding to, and he says after every time, he says, and the Father who sees what was done in secret will reward you. 
Now we can get that mixed up and say, okay, well, this is a, you know, like, okay, if I do this, then God's going to bless me. If I don't do this, God won't bless me. And then, so that's a, that's a workspace religion that we're getting at. And so that's not what Jesus is getting at. What I understand is that grace, uh, that fasting is a gift from God. It's a grace from God, just like prayer, just like uh, giving is actually a grace from God. And how I, how I determine that, uh, well, one scripture that really helps undergird that would be in Galatians chapter 6. Uh, we can actually go there if you want. And, you know, I, I kind of like to see that this is a means of grace. So we know, like, uh, I'm going to quiz you, my brother, because you're my brother. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes through. Believe. And believe through the? Spirit. Through the word of God. Close. My brother. <laughs> <laughs> but think about that. Faith comes through hearing and hearing from the word of God. Romans 10, 17. Okay, so how does faith increase? It comes not by striving, but putting yourself under the word of God. Mm -hmm. As we hear the words of God, faith <laughs> comes, faith increases. That's grace right there. The grace of God through the word of God into our soul so that we can have, great, so we can have deepened faith in Jesus Christ, right? And so I, this is almost this element of putting ourselves in position mm. for God's grace to be at work. We can't, we can't earn, our, earn God's favor. Mm -hmm. We can't uh, strive after God's grace, but we can, we can put ourselves in position for God's grace. Mm -hmm. This makes sense. And so Galatians 6, I love this text. Paul writes about 6, 8. For the one who sows to the flesh, his own flesh, well, from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. And so this idea, uh, Pastor Trent and those watching online, of sowing, right, to the spirit. So uh, this idea of putting yourself in position for God's grace to be at work in your life. So he can feed us. So he can feed us. Mm -hmm. Those who sow to the spirit will from the spirit reap. You sow and you trust God that he's going to, that, that there's going to be a reaping. There's going to be a, a harvest that comes. Yeah, yeah. But we're not earning God's favor. God's favor has already, we've already earned God's favor because of what Jesus has done, not because right. anything we've done. Mm. We, 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 we are in right standing with God and even growing in holiness. We can't even strive after that. Right. But we can position ourselves. I like, a, I always think of the picture of, uh, you like going on the beach, right? Yeah. All right. You like, you know, get the tan once in a while, my brother. <laughs> right. Right? So this is a great analogy because it's grace of God is like putting yourself, like, like you're going out, me and Pastor Trent, I won't get a tan, I'll get a sunburn. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, I'm a redhead. But, <laughs> but we, we go out there on the beach, my brother, and we, 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 we sit down there on the, on the, uh, on the sand and, and we put ourselves right before the sun. Mm -hmm. And we allow the sun to do his, do the, the sun to, to take, you know, to, to well, for me, it'd be burn, burn me, but for <laughs> right. you, right? To, right. to, to come Some upon vitamin you. D. And what happens is we walk, we, 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 we leave that place and we realize, oh man, you just got, you got tan, you got a little bit tan. I got burnt. But nonetheless, we changed. Mm -hmm. There was a transformation that happened. Mm -hmm. And all we did was put ourselves under the sun. Let it do its work. And let it do its work. Mm -hmm. And the same token, go ahead. No, I, what are you going to say? That we're not pantheists, but that's. Yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is with me. <laughs> but, but on the same token, when it comes to spiritual disciplines, we put ourselves in position under the sun. Yeah. Jesus Christ, yeah. through fasting, through prayer, through the word of God, right? Even through Christian community, we put ourselves in a position to allow God and his grace to fill our soul, to work in our heart, 
to reveal things to us. Mm -hmm. We can't strive at, after it, but I can open up his word and allow him to, to speak to me for his grace to fill me. Right. That makes sense. So it's, it's building that relationship and intimacy with Christ, right. really. Right. And I, I think that <clears throat> ties back to Matthew chapter 9 where he, he was talking about fasting and he went straight into this talk on uh, the, the wine and the new wine skins. And I think that, that what was being accomplished there with Jesus' earthly ministry was in a pretty radical and powerful way of this um, he wasn't creating a new truth or anything, but he was illuminating what God had been intending from the very beginning, and they had to lose their old wineskin so that the new could fit in reception of the Holy Spirit. And I think within the Christian faith, uh, he continues to do that, to reveal himself to us um, in, in you know, ways that are, that are all in line with Scripture, but it's still a, a new work in our life maybe. And, and I think that time of fasting works that of it's a constant kind of shedding of the old. It's keeping it fresh and new in the presence of God that he's uh, continually filling us. And it's not just a, a one time dump when we become a believer and then we just go on our own the rest of the time. Like there are times we need some stretching or we need some renewal. Uh, right. We need some renewal. And I think that's. Uh, tied into the fasting journey is is stepping into God's presence and saying, "All right, Lord, uh, we need to to refresh in our relationship a little bit here. See what do you want to do in me uh, or in our church family?" And we give Him space and permission to to come in and and change that you know direction or or vision that He's giving us. Yeah, because I just think our hearts can be so prone to hardness. Right. I mean, you know that. Uh, our hearts are prone to wander, you know, like Paul talks about how your hearts can be callous in, e in Ephesians chapter four. Mm -hmm. And I think our world, Paul says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so I just think our hearts can be hard through our own sinful nature, but then also the world itself can kind of conform us. Yeah. And so fasting kind of is a way, a grace from God that kind of, uh, as I like to describe, it's like a like a pipe and mm -hmm. we have all this stuff that's clogged in this pipe right mm -hmm. it's our flesh it's this world and fasting fasting by god's grace and through the power of the holy spirit kind of cleans it out cleans right. out that clog that 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 uh, that pipe right mm -hmm. and so that his his grace and his power can can work more abundantly in and through right. us Runs he already freely. he wants to like right yeah he, he, he he's his grace is already there it's we we are the ones that allow this clogging to take place right yeah. and it's it's hard but that's why you know uh, that's why we have these graces like fasting to right. help with that well and being in a part of the world where in a culture right here where a lot of our needs are met in our own strength if you will Absolutely. you know like the the reality of food or having a nice comfy home or cars to drive or clothes on our back or like we have we have those things provided so right. i think it's an even greater risk uh, to kind of feel like, well, yeah, I'm a, I'm a believer. I believe those things, but I'm doing good. So uh, family's good, personally good, like bills are paid. So I don't, you know, we, we neglect the leaning into the spirit. And I think this really uh, enhances our ability to heighten that awareness of God's presence by kind of setting some things aside intentionally uh, during a time of fasting. So. That's good. No, well, maybe we give uh, just a couple minutes here for some Q&A. So if you're watching online, uh, we're going to disconnect. But uh, thanks for being with us. And uh, we'll be back next Sunday. Uh, actually, we'll just have some time of prayer and fasting next Sunday. So I'm not sure what that will look like online exactly. But uh, you're welcome to, to check us out, see if we're here. Um,